Right now, guys, welcome back to another episode. This one's gonna be a cracker, mate. Hey, we're gonna take you from this little bush block here that's about 20 minutes out of Townsville. We'll show you a bit about that. We're gonna do a wicked roast cook up, roast meat and gravy rolls. Uh, a super special, easy dessert that I tell you what, Beck loves it and you're gonna love it as well. It's so easy, two ingredients. And then we're gonna take you to Magnetic Island in the tinny, mate. So we're gonna shoot across there. We're gonna do a lap of the island, show you a few of the sites. We're gonna pull up and have fish and chips on the beach, mate, at Horseshoe Bay. It's gonna be a good one. Let's get into it. Boy, and what I'm gonna to do too, I'll let you know a sneaky one now. You've been asking me for ages. I'm gonna give you a run through on the keg set up in the back of the canopy. So, had it for a while now, I know how to use it, and I reckon it's a damn good thing. I'll show you what it's all about. All right, so we've pulled up at the block now. It's Wednesday and it's state of origin number one. So I need um, satellite TV service. And where I parked is a big tree. Um, and it must be right where the satellite is. So I just have to re-jig where we're gonna camp uh, to give us some, <laughs> some satellite coverage so we can watch the origin. I'll show you what it's like when we pull up. Right, hey, let's kick this thing off with a bit of a tour around the block. So, I'm pretty sure it's about a 10 acre property. It's on hip camp, costs us about 30 bucks a night, uh, but you've got so much space. I think there's only 20 sites here, and a lot of them, they've all got their own different fire pits, so you won't find the same one. They've all got their own sort of unique one, which is pretty cool. I'll show you ours over here as well. Good for hanging camp ovens off and doing a bit of cooking and stuff. Plenty of space, plenty of low gum trees, so you can park under them. You don't have to worry about stuff falling on you and damaging you your head or your caravan, uh, and also plenty of shade, so that's pretty good. Uh, we did get here a day early yesterday because uh, State of Origin was on. We needed the satellite TV to work, so we parked up on top of the hill where there's no trees to uh, get the sat dish to work. But we've moved down here in the shade today, and there's a wicked little campfire around some logs and stuff, so we're gonna have a cook up here tonight. Happy days, hey? We like these spots. It's one of them things, you pull in, you think you might only do an overnighter on your way through Townsville. We're gonna end up spending three days here. I like it. All right, let's kick off with the roast, mate. This is a beef rib roast. Good one, mate, from Coles or Woolies. Uh, it's two kilos. Go about an hour per kilo, plus about half hour. So I'll cook it for about two and a half hours. This one I'm just gonna do in the Weber. Just crank it on high and uh, put a convection tray in there, like a roasting tray. And then we're just gonna sit this on top of a little trivet. I'll show you when I open the Weber. And we'll just let it cook away in there. And then you can just like slice it. Put it on some uh, nice fresh bread rolls with a bit of gravy. Now what I do, I cook it in one of these trays. And then any of the fat that comes down, I can tip that into the gravy too for a bit of flavor. What I do is just grab a bit of rub. This one I've been using on everything. It's just called Magic Dust. You can use it on bloody fish, seafood, pork, chicken. It's just um, a nice sort of oh, seasoning, a bit of allspice, you know what I mean? Give it a good rub, just on the fat. Roll him over. I've seen, um, I've been watching heaps of stuff on barbecuing and slow cooking and that. A lot of them use mustard first, so they'll uh, rub like Dijon mustard all over their meat as like a binder or something to hang on to the rub. I haven't started doing that yet, but I'm not a big mustard fan, so I have to try it on something small first. Anyway, that's it. Rub that, wash my hands, slap it in the Weber. I'll give you a quick look at this. I've used this one a few times, just one of those convection trays and then a little trivet on top, just to keep the meat off the direct heat. Bang, one of these jobs. It took us for ages to a crab to hear it, and you 
Boy, I've got a cracking tip for you with the baby Q Webbers. I don't know if yours is the same, but sometimes they struggle to get hot enough, especially if there's a bit of a wind around. They don't like to heat up to like above 180. What I do is use the small fall trays, same ones I put the roast in. You just shove them down the side of the hood and then crimp them over. And it just stops the wind getting in those gaps. And I reckon you can easily get another 50, 60 degrees out of it like pretty quick. So when you're roasting or you want to get above 200, give that a crack, eh? Sometimes I don't even bother. If it's real windy, I might bugger it. We can't use the Weber because it just, um, it won't get hot enough, eh? Hey? So if you got any tips for me, I wonder if you can change your jets out on the hose or anything. I don't know. Let me know if you got any tips. Get in here, get in here. You gotta love this, check it. Hang on, watch this pour, watch this pour. Oh, it's got a bit of head. Don't stuff the pour, mate. Oh, that's not too bad. Look at that, hey? Eh? <laughs> I've been getting so many questions about these. I've dead set. Hang on a second, let me see how it goes. Oh, nothing like a good tap beer, hey, when you're camping. Uh, so many questions about this. We've had it in the car for a few months now. Uh, it's a kit that I put in myself. You can get it online. All the info's down here. Uh, they're from iKegger, it's just a website. A couple of lads that sell all this sort of different kegerator kits and taps and all that. So I'll start at the front. So I've got two taps on here. They're flow control taps and they're good for travel. So you can see this little bar on the side here. So um, this one here won't pour beer because that's down. This one here will pour beer because the tap's up. So these are really good for travel because they, you, nothing can hit these while you're traveling and rattle and hit them and pour beer out in your canopy while you're traveling. As long as you've got that locked off, you're safe, mate. It's not going to um, pour beer out. And you can also control your flow with that as well so up and down just like a normal tap right so they're the keg uh they're the taps all they do punch straight through there they've got a thread on them two hole saws bang straight through the wall this is a dometic crx 110 there is nothing in the door there that you can hurt it's like a little aluminium skin a bit of foam then plastic on the inside uh, so you punch them through i put silicon around them when i fitted them in and then on the inside if you swing in there there's the bulkhead fitting there you just screw the, uh, the brass fitting up and then you put your lines on. So I've got two kegs in here, two five letter stainless mini kegs, all right? And then all you do, you've got um, a set of tubes that come with it, all these food grade plastic tubes. They got quick connect fittings on them. So they're all pushed together. You can cut them to size. And then you've got one that feeds gas in and then one that feeds beer back out to your tap. So this here, you've probably all seen this lately. Over the years, everyone's got a soda stream bottle, right? This is just a big soda stream gas bottle. It's hooked up to a little mini regulator up here. So can you come in here a bit closer? Oh, hang on. Oh. Hang on. Hang on, I'll just shut the table, get in here. Oh, there you go. So swing in close here, you'll see the little um, uh, regulator. So on top, you just twist it and you watch the dial go up. So you can put as much gas as you want in. I find around 7 PSI works good for this system. I can't remember what they recommend. But anyway, it's all quick connect fittings. You've got a, a gray one goes on the spear and then a black one goes on the middle spear and you've got beer that comes out. All you do, I go, I take these into breweries and pubs and just ask first, I go, oh, can you fill growlers or mini kegs? And they go, yeah, no dramas. And you're like, sweet, fill that up. Normally, they've been about 60 to 70 bucks to fill because um, the breweries you go to are normally craft breweries. So um, yeah, it's a little bit pricey, but you get a good beer. I always look at it like, there's 12 schooners in one of those. If we were to go to a cool brewery in Margaret River and buy 12 schooners, there's probably like 120, 130 bucks. So you're getting the same amount of beer for 60, 70 bucks and you get to enjoy it wherever you are. So there you go. It's as simple as that, mate. Like, honestly, I can't tell you much more. It's so easy to fit. You could put it in any sort of fridge that will house these kegs, um, or you can put, even put it in an esky and like fill them full of ice and take them down the beach. But it's super easy, mate. I'll tell you what, I'm, I know I get excited over little things. Beck's holding the camera there, just like shaking her head, going, why are, you, why are you so excited about this? But this is why, look, look where we are. You're mm -hmm. in the middle of a bush camp. And I'm over here, Late, later on, I'll have like a little fire going. And I'll sit here having me tap beer with me Fiji gold glass from years ago. Mm. <laughs> it just goes good. Well, yeah, uh, today's the day. You've never seen this before, but we're gonna do it because it's a quiet place and we're on our own. You know what's up on the hill there with the blue lid, dear? Oh, the dunny. The dump point. Yeah. Beck's gonna empty the dump point. No. Kids, let's have a vote. Let's have a vote. Who votes mum empties the dump point? It's One, oh, two, three, four. Who votes mum doesn't empty the dump point? 
No. Four versus one. That's your Finally, you do after job. seven and a half years, Beck's going to empty the dump point. You don't do my job. I'm going to take this camera along and show you as well. Hey? Got your gloves? Got your face mask? <laughs> 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 this is the best day of my life. <laughs> what do you reckon? Funny. <laughs> Everyone's coming to watch, us. We're they? all coming to watch. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Click the bird. I just don't, I need you to understand, like, imagine me for the last seven I years. I don't see you making any beds or picking towels up off the floor. <laughs> I think plenty of towels up off the floor, I mate. I vacuum. I vacuum. I vacuum the car. I don't see you vacuuming the car. It's always a competition with you. I don't you. doing the washing either. Oh, who did four loads of washing the other day? Oh, you're so full of it. The chores in our household are very equal. Guess what? This is your job. Do you use the toilet every day? Do you use the shower every day? <laughs> Do you, you've never washed the shower. You're on your... Uh, you the towels, I'm enjoying this immensely. And I picked them up off the floor. Actually, do you ever put your clothes in the washing drawer? <laughs> no, but do you know why? Because <laughs> I know it gives you the shits. <laughs> so I don't do it. Uh, and I still do it without saying anything. <laughs> yeah, right. She blows up every night, she deluxe. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm enjoying this quite a lot because um, I've got to soak this up. This doesn't happen every day. Do you need a tutorial? No. Make you sure? Put it in there. I've done my fair share of dump points, mate. Oh, how good is this though, having a dump point at a bush camp? It's killer. I'm not going to show you this part. And I'm bending over, so. You'll be all right. Okay. All right, off you go. My boots. Have you got a, a method? Do you hold your breath? Do you, yes. do you hold it low? Do you, oh, oh, you don't tilt the canister. You've got to tilt the canister. There you go. Hey, oh, we don't want to see that. A couple of Chiquito bars popping out of there. Hang on, close up on the face. Did you get a good sniff? Good whiff? Oh. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Well, you definitely do the most poos in the family. So. Oh, yeah, three a day. Nothing wrong with that. Got good bowel movements. I do 10 a day. 10? There's something wrong with that. Well, there. you can start emptying the toilet. Well, I'm going to. Yeah, congratulations. You've got to shake my Give hand. Give me an elbow that. bump. Boom. Well done. <laughs> I like it. No, honestly, I reckon, what's that? Seven years, probably your third or fourth time? Uh, no, 24th time. Oh, I don't know about that. I think you've got tickets. Well, it's the last now. <laughs> no more. Uh, anyway, I like this idea. Dump point, big tank. Excuse so me, it just obviously just drops. Way more. Sorry, mate? Way more. Way more what? <laughs> what? She's emptied it way more. Well, she's emptying it way more. Oh, from now on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Bezzy wants you to empty it too. Loves it. Yeah, anyway, obviously this thing, dump point, pipe, straight into a big tank. And then a truck can just come and suck it out whenever it's full. I like it. That might work well at our bush block in bloody base camp Queensland, Bill. What do you think? Yeah. Huh? We might be able to um, start having a few campers if we get it set up right. We just need to be home long enough to actually put some time in and get it right. But anyway. <laughs> I think I'm um, I'm out of the good books of Beck for a few days. The best day of Dad's life. That was worth it. Him. Charlie Bear's turn to light the fire tonight. Go, Bearsy. Oh, oh, you gotta hold it on. Click it. Hold him on. Nice. Move around to the other one down the bottom. It's gonna be a crack in Arvo. Look at this. The sun's gonna go down just over here. Light him up. Oh. That's it. Move around. Do the one in the middle. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh. Hey, Charlie, how many days till your birthday? Um, two. Two? How old are you going to be? Eight. Eight? What's the one thing you most want for your birthday? A then? watch. A watch? Okay. Do you reckon you've been good enough to get a watch? <laughs> yes. <laughs> watch out, there's a fire behind you. All right, I'll give you a look at this roast. I have not touched it for an hour. I put it in, shut the lid, let it go. Let's have a look. So with these things on, she's up around 210, 220. We'll take these off. And grab them. They don't get too hot. Pull them off. Let's have a look at her. Oh, I tell you what, that goes all right. We're gonna um, 
flip her over like this. Uh, we'll shut the lid and go again for another hour. Oh, look at this, look at this. Hey, this is how she's ended up, mate, after two and a half hours in the weather. Thank you very much. Hey, see in the tray there, all the juices. Have a look, mm. can you get in there? That's gonna go on the gravy. So, oh, I'm pretty simple with gravy. I don't carry on too much. I just use the traditional one. And I slap it in with a bit, bit of hot water. And then, uh, like, I, like I've done here, you just cook it in a tray and then pour the drippings in and stir it through so you get a bit of flavor. Uh, and that's it. So what I'm gonna do, uh, me and the kids, pan over here, dear. Uh, me and the kids have got bread rolls. So we're gonna have bread and uh, <laughs> uh, roast gravy roll. And uh, Becky Boo's gonna have a salad. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be quite bloody delicious. Here, have a close look. Look at this. Oh yeah, hey. That looks oh. so good. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I'll keep carving that up. We'll throw it on a bread roll. And we'll enjoy it for dinner. But what we're gonna do, tonight is the night we're gonna do the Nutella souffle. So it's like a two ingredient souffle. Uh, well, three if you include the ice cream. But you cook it in the Weber. It's so easy, but it's bloody delicious. Do you reckon it goes wrong? Two ingredients, you can't beat it. Like. Oh, it's, it's so good. All right, we'll show you that. Anyway, gravy. Oh, quick, swing into the gravy. There it is. Here's the gear here. Tip her in. Oh. Give it a stir. Now I just just put the boiling water into that. So you give it a quick stir to try and combine it all, and then all those flavors go into the gravy. It's good stuff. As promised, I'm going to make a dessert. It's going to be super easy. It's going to be a couple of ingredients. I'm going to cook it in the Weber. The best, quickest, easiest dessert you will have in a caravan. Mom's packing it into Townsville. Yeah, man. Yay! What mm. you try that? Here it is, that one is. I just want to say this. Yeah, Bob! <laughs> Dad, don't put that in. Please, I beg you. What about the water? There's a coconut from New Zealand. Mm. Oh, no, I get the whole thing to myself. All right. I'm happy. All right, successful launch at the Port of Townsville, mate. Hey, where are we going today, Bill? Magnetic Island. We are going to Magnetic Island. So hopefully this cloud burns off at about lunchtime, but it's about nine o'clock now. It's only a short run over to Maggie. It's supposed to be a good day with like 10 knots, 15 knots of wind, but it's pretty protected over there. Uh, what we're going to try and do is take you for a coffee. Uh, we'll pull into Delhi Bay, go out to get a coffee. Then we'll come out, do a loop of the island, try and find this wreck that I've seen photos of. And then uh, Horseshoe Bay for lunch, mate. There's fish and chips in a pub over there. So yeah. that's the plan. Let's go. What do you reckon? Yeah. Oh, God. Good stuff. Got a few rods too. I don't know where to fish over here, but if we see something, we'll have a crack. But otherwise, it's just a day trip. So we're just rolling into Nelly Bay. Beck put the clock on it. So yeah. from the time she jumped in at the boat ramp to us driving in here now is how long? 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Yeah. And it's not a glass off. We we're still doing 40 k's, but uh, so anyway. So quick. This is a crack and I'm spewing it's not sunny for you because yeah. this is so pretty as you come in here. Some really nice units and rock walls. And this is where the actual magnetic island ferry drops you off if you get in your car and come over. So that's the car barge there, Rooster. Look at you. Bloody nice spot. And there's, from memory, there's a little joint up the road called Scallywags. I'm going to drop Beck off. She's going to wander up there and get a couple of takeaway coffees. And I'm going to flick around here for some squid while I wait for me coffee. We even bring our keep cups. We did. That's how organised we are this morning. <laughs> okay. need, just need this sun to come out. Yeah, oh. hopefully this cloud burns off. It's supposed to be a partly cloudy today, so. Beauty, look at that little magnetic island sign. So pretty. If you haven't been here, even if you don't have a boat, mate, just jump in your car and come over. It's such a good day trip. 
Careful. How good. It's actually really nice coffee. It's a cracker, eh? Yeah. Nice one. Out of getting the extra shots because their coffee is so strong. Oh, there you go. And I tasted it and I was like, good stuff. Super nice chicks in there at Scallywags. Yeah. Scallywags. Scallywags. Here we are. The electric. You just drag it around. Oh, well, there we go. Awesome. What are you doing there, dear? Got it? Muscles. Come on, muscles. Oh, I don't want to hit Don't fall in. You'll be right. Just let the boat hit the edge of the pontoon. Hey. All right, jump in. Try to pull that in. Oh, Bill, you jumped out. You Thanks, darling. Thank you. The coffee, darling. Appreciate it. Oh, so yum. Coffee, coffee. coffee. Are you guys jumping in? Jump in, let's go. So how far is the walk, mate? Honestly, I reckon it's like 100 metres. 100 metres? Yeah, but we are on someone's pontoon. <laughs> <laughs> There's no house there. I think we're no. pretty right. Yeah, it does say for sale, so. Let the connoisseur tell you what it's like. What is it? Oh, it goes all right. Mm. I like it. I'm not a big fan of that sippy cup hole. I'd rather. Yeah. It's good in the car, but when you um you want to drink coffee, you just take it off. Charlie. I love a sippy cup hole. Mm. It's not a sippy cup. That's like the toddlers. Sorry. Yeah, it's not <laughs> a sippy cup. What's it called? Keep cup. Keep cup. And travel mug. We just got these at the supermarket the other day. Got them day. at Woolies because we. Keep spilling coffee on me lap when we get in the car. And the boat! Done. Now I want to show you this wreck. Um, we can't quite get in there, the tide's wrong for us and it's super shallow. We just sort of made our way in. But it's all coral and um, reef flats and it's coming up to a low tide so I don't want to get stuck in there or hit it. Uh, bomby with the prop so I'm just going to get the drone up and go and show you this uh, wreck. It's called the SS City of Adelaide. I've seen some photos of it before and it looks epic. It's just like got mangroves growing out of it and all that. Uh, I think they snorkel it on a high tide if it's clear, maybe. I don't know, it's a bit of a sketchy one around here. You sort of get these reports of croc sightings on the western side of Maggie. Uh, but I've just seen a bloke spearfishing out in front of Nelly Bay and he got a cold trout so it can't be too crocky around here. Anyway, We'll show you this wreck and then we'll keep going around and have lunch. Bill, Billy just about squid jigged him, his mother in the face. All right, so here's a bit of info about the SS Adelaide for you. So it was a 77 meter vessel constructed in 1864 in Glasgow and spent many years as a passenger ship before being converted to a coal storage vessel in 1902. In 1912, the coal caught fire and the city of Adelaide burned for two days. Three years after the fire, a magnetic island businessman named George Butler purchased the ship with plans to refit her as accommodation for tourists or as a breakwater in Picnic Bay. The Adelaide ran aground at Cockle Bay in 1916 while being transported after sail and it's just 300 metres offshore making it possible to wade out to the wreck during a low tide. Uh, locals used the ship as changing rooms when uh, coming to swim around the wreck or collect oysters that grew on its sides. In 1942, four servicemen died when their fighter plane crashed into the rear mast of the city of Adelaide while on a training exercise. And the hull of the ship then sustained further damage in Cyclone Althea in 1971. This is Horseshoe Bay, mate. So there's a swimming enclosure, a boat ramp, a few shops, fish and chip shop. And I think there's a little oh, pub there too. But well, we are going to pull up. We'll throw the anchor out. Uh, Beck will walk up and order some fish and chips. We can sit on the beach, mate. We brought the footy over. Spend an hour. Wait for the tide to come back in a bit, and then we'll head home. Oh, we made it, mate. Mm. What'd that sting you? 35. That's all right. Mm. 35 bucks for fish and chips on the beach at Horseshoe. And a calamari. Here's the boat. Look, you can see it down here. I think we're going to be high and dry for about an hour. Fish. We'll have to wait for the tide to come back in. Shut this. All right. How they go, kids? Good uh -huh. chips? Yeah, they are hot. What do you got there, Beji? Um, I forgot. Yeah. Potato scallop. Yeah. Potato scallop. 
Potato in a gear. Yes. You're dreaming. Potato yes, you can swim out the front here too. Scallops. How sick. Sun's out, love. Yay, finally. Hey, how good. It's beautiful. It's so nice. I tell you what, Horseshoe Bay looks bloody spectacular when the sun comes out. Real good vibe there, eh? Yeah, everyone's on holidays, chill oh, mode. Chill mode. Lots good. of bikinis, lots of backpackers by yeah, the look of it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really nice on, on the island. If you can get over here, well worth it. Even if you want to catch the barge. Like, yeah, you take your car. for a day trip. It's really nice. Absolutely. There's no um, hot tip. Don't bother bringing your caravan. There's really nowhere to stay with your caravan. I don't think you can anyway. It'd be good if there was. There is a campground on here. And you can, I think if you had rooftop tents and that, you'd be sweet. Uh, anyway, we're going to duck around. We're going to go around the south side of the island now uh, and have a look at a few bays on our way home. We've sort of got to leave now or we'll get um, high and dry with the boat on the beach because the tide's going out. So we'll um, go and see what we can find. Ah, as always, when we take the boat out, the bloody blows up in the arvo. I feel like we need to start coming home at lunchtime. We end up getting belted by a bloody 15 to 20 knotter. Anyway, it's all good. Just a slow run home. A little bit of side on stuff and pushing in behind us. We'll just poke along. Get a little bit wet, but it'll only be about 20 minutes, half hour. We'll get home. Ha! Billy's like a little bit wet. He's soaking wet. Well, I'm glad that's over. Far out. That was a pretty uncomfortable half hour. Really? Hey? I thought fine. Are you with Vaughn? Yeah. Bill did well. Thanks, Bill. And my little man up the front. It's soaked. It's soaked. I tell you what, the following sea is not fun. But you just got to take your time and uh, you get home all right. All right, what do you reckon? We could go a hot shower and a cold beer. Oh, I'm Sounds all right. Everyone else is having a nap up the back there. Oh, it's a movie. All right, time to go home. Anyway, that was Magnetic Island. Hope you enjoyed that one. Just to keep you updated, this is Beck's first unassisted uh, reversing down the ramp. So, I think she'll go all right. <laughs> she starts to freak out when the trailer goes down the ramp, she can't see it. She needs to like dip her mirrors a bit so she can follow it, but she's getting there. She's doing really well. She Megan, she'll get it this time, boys, straight down? Yeah, I reckon she'll Yeah. Oh, she's got it nailed. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You got it, you got it. Keep coming. Right up. Yeah, that's perfect. Come on. He's on the rollers. Yeah, he is. He's perfect. I got lucky. Put your fingers. Let's go. It's called Nutella Souffle. Um, all you need is eggs and Nutella. That's it. Two ingredients eggs, Nutella. All you got to do is separate the egg whites and the egg yolks and then we whisk the egg whites into a soft peak leave them this is why i've got this i bought this from woolies for 10 bucks mate that there chuck a couple of beta things into it these ones it might only be nine bucks Rue. chuck them in there whisk them up to a soft peak and then you throw your egg yolks and your nutella together uh stir that through so it's like a thick paste then you fold your egg whites through it chuck it in a ramekin which is one of these if you don't have a ramekin i have before used a bundy rum tin in the weber and i'll tell you what it came out all right you chuck it in the weber at 200 for like 15 20 minutes bring it out slap some ice cream on it boom Big dog, six, there we go. So you sort of just make it up as you go. And then I'll show you a little trick later once you make them. And this one, see all that? Mm, that's extra for dad, that one. And then we mix it up. Right, that's the main two things done. You got your egg yolk and your egg white. 
you're worried what's going on in here, that's not a screen movie. Can that's. You, I didn't realize you were filming this. That's way. Becky Boo with her LED mask on or something. Anyway, what you do, I will grab my spatula. It's super easy now. So you've got uh, your egg yolks and your Nutella that I mixed together, and then you've got the egg whites to a soft peak, apparently. I think that's close enough. Anyway, all you do, watch this, tip it in. So you scoop all that in. Then the technical word for it is fold. So you fold the egg whites in. First time I did this, I'm like, there's no way this is gonna work. Like, what the hell is going on? It's eggs and Nutella. But I tell you what, it works and you're gonna love it. Here's our little ramekins and they're full of our liquid. What you gotta do, this is my little hot tip to make it like a little bit more indulgent. Get like half a tablespoon of Nutella and your little ramekin and then it's gonna be difficult to do one handed but scoop it off in there like this. Boop. Yeah. So then when it cooks up, you have like this gooey bit of Nutella in the middle. Trust me. Here we go. <clears throat> Preheated Weber, slap them in. Twenty minutes in there, mate, and she'll be good to go. Are you ready for this? What the hell? Look at this. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, look at it, it's so juicy. Yum. Look at that. They're probably the best ones you've done. Go back a bit. Wow. Look Mine's at that, so that is egg and Nutella. Can you believe that? It looks like a cake. Wait till you open it. Hey? Ooh, swinging here. This is what they end up like. Look at this. Can you believe it's Nutella and egg? Anyway, grab it by the little ramekin, flip him out. Oh. Boom. Oh, look at that. There's that chunk of Nutella in the bottom. So we'll scoop Yum. that out. Scoop him out. Oh, be a bit crispy on top. And then like it's good on its own. You can just eat it like a cake in a cup. But if you slam a bit of ice cream on it like that, Done. it is legit. Okay? You're gonna thank me later. And Beck loves it because look at that, it fits perfectly in <laughs> what dear? My van dining. Your van dining. Yeah. Perfect for the square bowl. Anyway, as they say in England, I'm born up at it. I've gone south, I've gone east, west, inward and out. Well, see you later, the block in Townsville. Hello, Lucinda. Lucinda! Ready to catch a barra? Yeah. <laughs> Been trying to get a barra for him for a long time. We just can't seem to jag one, can barra we? Barra fishing is just hard. <laughs> it's very hard. But I'll tell you what, uh, we've got a few hot tips for up around Lucinda and Hinchinbrook. Uh, we'll head up there and see if we can't snag a big chromie. But hope you enjoyed that one. Awesome little bush camp, good cook up. And uh, a little island trip yesterday over to Maggie. So, say bye, Rue. Bye. <laughs> See you guys. Hey, good time to show you what we do to actually stop the dunny smelling so much. So, one thing, we've got the SOG. So, this is like a little vent. It plugs into this tube here, plugs into a bung on top. So, when you do open the blade valve, that um, the fan starts and it sucks all the vapours outside through a charcoal filter. So, you don't get the smell coming up through inside. <clears throat> it works really well. Um, but we also put these things in because back home at base camp we've got Oron Septic so it's great to be have like septic safe stuff uh, and these things are. So these things are like Eco, alright, so it's Eco Travel as the brand but we used to use a few things, we tried using, um, when we used it for years actually, it was like uh, nappy sand sort Boost. of treatment stuff or Boost and that just used to stop the smell a bit but it, you know what it did do, it used to dry out the rubbers and um, the, on the blade valve a lot and make them go real chalky and crusty which then you sort of had to clean it all the time but this stuff here they come in these little bags just like blue Lou or sachets and that like um i don't know what it is but it's all biodegradable so you throw that in and the water dissolves the that little coating and then the blue stuff goes throughout it and it stops it smelling so it's really good so what we do what we do is throw one of them straight normally from the inside throw it straight in there all right i'll pull this out and give you a look and then this stuff, this is a cleaner, um, 
I mean, spray it in our shower in the toilet bowl and stuff. You can put it in a, a spray bottle and dilute it, but we normally just have at her. So open it up, give it a bit of a squirt in there on top of the blade valve. It sort of lubricates that as well, we find. Shut that, and then that's it. it smells really good, and it's septic safe as well. You can use it in your shower and your sink and all that. So anyway, that's it. Thought I'd just let you know. They're um, nice people, good company, and um, makes your dunny smell really good. If you give it a swish around with that stuff in it, then the next time you open it, it, uh, it doesn't give you that rotten, um, foul poo smell. Yeah. And uh, I tell you what, Beck was playing it up before. She was like, it stinks. If you don't use these blue sachets, it stinks a hell of a lot worse. Don't worry about that. Slide him in, you pop the bung, put the tube back in, feed him in there. We hide the little bung in there and then we shut the door. Ready for Beck to destroy it again tomorrow morning, eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, who knows what Castle Hill is in Townsville? It's a bloody big stinking hill that most people drive up and look off, but because I lived here for so long when I was younger, uh, <laughs> I've made a pact with myself now. Every time I come through, I've got to still run it to make sure I can still run it and I've got some sort of fitness. Used to do it like two, three times a week in my 20s when I lived here. Smash it up the hill, race down, do stairs at the top, like ridiculous. I'm going to super struggle today but I've never missed it. Every time we travel through here, I've always gone and done it. And I have to run from the bottom, the touch footy ovals to the top without stopping. I'll show you when I get to the top, I'm gonna to be a beetroot and just wrecked. I'm, yeah, I'm the worst shape I've been in in a long time. Man, I'm old. <laughs>